Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey. If anybody is new and joining me here for the first time, thank you so much. Let's get the formalities out of the way. First one is my slogan is believable brown beauty. That is the kind of makeup I like to do. And yes, at times I do use makeup in slightly unconventional ways. So, on to this week's video. I've been thinking about this. Well, yeah, like all today, because I knew I had to film today and I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? And I just had this thought come into my head, like the power of one. So, in this video, I am limiting myself to one of each product um, because like I know lots of tutorials do lots and lots of different products like maybe two or three eyeshadows, two or three mascaras, two or three brow products, you get my point. But I just thought to myself like how interesting could it be to do a video where you just use one mascara, one eye pencil, one eyeshadow, um, one blush, one powder, one lip gloss, just basically one of everything. So that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get into it. First, I'm taking my faithful NARS Radiant Creamy in Amand and just popping that on my eyes. I'm taking a dome shadow brush from Real Techniques and just blending that out. I just remembered. I forgot a bit. I do live get ready with me's on Sunday mornings at 9.30 GMT, so I'll pop my Instagram handle for you here. It's really fun. If you're around, come and hang out with us, and if you're not, just catch the replay, but it's my favorite thing to do, so I'd really love it if you'd come and join in with us over there. Back to the concealer blending. I'm taking my Benefit 24 hour brow setter, and just gonna brush up my brows. So let's brush up Struggalina first. And then this beauty of a brow here. For foundation, I'm using my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk in the color 10. And I'm just gonna pop this on my face. I love the smell of this foundation. I know I shouldn't like products that have smells in them. But it smells really good. I actually do really like this foundation. I just don't use it that much on my channel. I think Cover Effect Power Play kind of just took over and I forgot about all the other ones that I like but this one has got like a like a, a very subtle pearlized finish to the skin pearlized it might be a bit of a strong word oh luminosity it gives your skin a really luminous finish so oh yeah because it's called <laughs> it's called luminous silk so that's why but I also like that it's quite sheer so even though I've popped it on I can still see like I'm gonna call it skin character through my foundation and I actually really quite like that because I feel like it always makes it look more believable. God, I'm hitting all the puns today. So yeah, that's that. As you can probably see, this foundation is a little bit light. It always has been a little bit light, but because I usually kind of adjust my foundations with other products, it never really bothered me because it suited me really well in the center of my face. So I had to really think about like what product I was going to use and what I was going to keep and what I was going to get rid of. So I'm going to adjust this with a powder later on. So do not fear. It will still look right. It just takes a little bit longer to get there. So for powder, this was the thing where I was like, okay, I have to be clever about this because I don't know if it's showing on camera yet. My jaw area is definitely deeper than my cheeks. And so I cannot use one foundation all over, but I was like, but that's the rules that you've given yourself. You have to use one foundation. So I'm taking the Danessa Myricks powder, the Evolution powder in number five, and I'm just taking a fluffy powder brush. And I'm gonna use this to adjust the tone of my foundation in the lower half of my face. Because I don't always set my base I think while I do uh, tutorials, I tend to do that more often, but I'm not someone that always sets concealer or always sets foundation. So I was just like, actually, I would prefer to have this. And you can see, oh yes, I'm back. Um, it looks so much nicer. I have had my makeup done by other makeup artists before where they have made my face all one color, like they haven't really paid attention to the fact that my jawline and my forehead is a bit deeper. And I just feel like I look really weird with one color all over my face. So I love this powder, it's so finely milled, it's really, really beautiful. And 
undetectable on the skin. There's a bit of a theme here. I like things that you can't really see. I'm taking a little bit more and I'm just gonna pop this on my forehead. Seven head, we know it's the seven head, but the real term is forehead. And just kind of bronze up. And just do a little bit more sculpting in the area. Then I'm gonna take a bit more and actually use it as like, I don't wanna say it's contouring because it's not, because it's quite a warm powder. But it's just giving me a little bit more something, a little bit of something along the cheekbone. So yeah, that's the skin done. Okay, now we're going to move on to eyes. Oh, did I bring a mirror, a small mirror? So I wanted to show how you can just use one pencil and one shadow and create a really, really pretty look just by manipulating um, how you use them. So I've got Costa Riche, which is generally my lip pencil. And I'm gonna use it in its rightful place for once today. And I'm actually using it on my eyes, but I'm not using it as an eye pencil. I'm using it as a base. So when I used to work in like a hair and makeover salon years and years and years ago, this is how we did makeup all the time because our kits were really quite questionable and we didn't have a lot of things to play with. I don't know, maybe that's where I just got into the rhythm of making things work with what I had. So we didn't have much, and this was a trick we always used to do, was to use a black pencil. It was mostly when we were doing a smoky eye, using a black pencil as a base. But I'm just taking this Costa Riche, and I'm using that as an eyeshadow base. It's a really, really beautiful brown. And I'm just laying it up because as you blend it out, it will get softer and softer, which is fine for like this area, but I want some intensity on the lid. Then I'm running that same pencil underneath. I'm taking a bigger brush, a big fluffy brush. It's a 224 from MAC and just really working the edges and making sure that's totally seamless. Then I'm taking this beautiful eyeshadow from Hourglass and the color is Foil. It's a scattered light eyeshadow. I think I used Blaze in a video, a couple of videos ago. Oh yes, I'll put a card somewhere so you can have a look at that one. But um, I love this shadow. I've only used it once, but I was very, very impressed. So I'm literally taking the same brush that I used to blend out the shadows. And I'm just gonna pop this color in the middle of my eyelid. That wasn't enough. There we go. So I'm literally just blending that into the pencil underneath and concentrating the colour in the middle. So you get like a halo or spotlit eye, but you haven't had to use a million products to do it. A lot of the time, like just changing your placement can really affect the way a shadow looks once it's on. So then once again, just going straight down the middle of my eyelid and then blending the edges away. Such a gorgeous eyeshadow. Repeat on the second eye. What's super impressive about this eyeshadow is there's hardly any fallout and I was really, really baffled because it doesn't look like it shouldn't have fallout yet. Did I say that right? It looks like it should have fallout. This is it. So you can see, it's quite a chunky texture. It goes on so, so well. So yeah, very happy with that. We're gonna go back to brows and I'm taking Spikes Brow Pencil from MAC just to fill that in. I'm sure my mum's gonna watch this and tell me my eyebrows need doing again. She's right, they do. That is tomorrow's job. I'm going to take my brow gel and just run that through once again to make sure that the shape is really soft. I was a bit annoyed when I did my last video, my most recent one. I'll leave a regard for you there. I was annoyed because I didn't brush my brows through properly and I could see a really hard line and I was like, oh, just take your time. 
But I think it's because I did that during Amanda's nap time and I knew he was gonna wake up and I was right. So yeah, forgive me for that. Because I saw it too. And I kind of like what this powder does on my cheeks. I'm gonna add a bit more. And I'm gonna kind of run it through my crease as well. Obviously use a smaller brush, but I have a lot of space here so I can kind of cheat and use this. So now the next thing is mascara. And I was just like, oh, this is like choosing between children. I don't know which one to go for. So the two options I have, they're gonna be the MAC ones because they are, they are my favorites. I'd say that like, if we were marking it out of 100, this is 100, the Hourglass Caution is like 97, and then for definition, like nothing else I've tried tops um, the extended play. So I was like, what do I want to go for? Do I want volume or definition? Because they do separate things. This one is definitely more volumizing, this one's definitely more definition. I love them both. So, I think, oh, I'm gonna go with, this is so hard. I'm going to go with In Extreme Dimension. And that's going to be my one mascara. This feels so unnatural using one mascara only. But this is the task I set myself. I love the end of this uh, mascara wand. I don't know if I've ever showed you this before. So I'll do that now. Just get my face out of the way. But I don't know if you can see... But it's got like tiny spikes on the tip of the brush, which is really good for doing, sit back on me, yeah, it's really good for doing your lower lashes. So if I had to only pick one, I'd pick this, because I can do both. And it does separate, it just doesn't give you as much definition as in extended play. But if I had to choose, it would be just this one. And then just concentrate the majority of this mascara on the outer corner. So I've taken it like halfway along the lash line. And what that does is it just gives a bit more weight to the corners. Yeah, I like how that looks. Then for blush, I am taking Ambering Rose. Is that, yeah, Ambering Rose. I haven't used this blush for ages because I kind of was... Not kind of, I am obsessed with Fleur Power Blush, but I have been told that people want to see other things. So I'm gonna show you this too. Now, what I love about this blush is that it has like, I don't know if, it, if that will show on camera, will it show? Let's see. Put that there. But yes, you can see it's got like golden flecks in it. So it's kind of like a highlighter built into your blush and I really like that. So I'm just going to pop some more of that here. Now lips are something that I'm going to find a bit trickier because these are the options okay. I can either do a really basic lip with just a gloss, fine, but if I do a lipstick with my lip shape I need to use a pencil. So how am I gonna navigate this? Oh, I've used Costa Rica already for my eyes. So I'm just gonna use that on my lips too. So hold on. Then I'm taking Costa Rica eye pencil. And I'm gonna use this for my lip liner. So I'm taking this Hourglass, um, I think they're called Girl, Girl Lip Stealers. I will link this in the description box below. I put all the names of all the products that I use in the, in the description box below. Um, the colour I'm using is Inventor. And I'm going to use this Corally lip colour instead, so yeah. Typically this isn't a colour that I would actually wear. It's not like my, my go-to is like a nude or a red or a pink. But I really like this lip combo. That's really pretty, isn't it? So guys, there you have it. This is the final makeup look for today. Um, yeah, that was a really fun makeup 
challenge that I set myself. It may not be that challenging, but I feel like it's very easy when you're a makeup artist um, to just use a lot of products because you have them to hand. And I wanted to show that the power of one is definitely a thing. Like you can literally use one of each thing and still create a really beautiful look. I loved the, um, if I'm not tooting my own horn, but I really like the way that I made the skin work because I know that I can't use one foundation all over, but that's the rules that I set. I couldn't use more than one. So it was pretty cool to use the Danessa powder to adjust my skin. Um, it's also been a bit of an eye opener as well because this isn't typically a look that I wear. I don't really wear corals and peaches that much. I mean, I might do it as a shadow, but not really on my cheeks and not really on my lips either. I'm definitely like a nude red, pink, brown kind of girl. I kind of skip over oranges and corals a little bit and it was quite nice to see how this colour worked out on me because it's not something that I would naturally lean towards but I was trying today to push myself out of my comfort zone in terms of all the products that I use. So yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and if you have subscribed or you do, please also hit the notification bell because that's actually a thing now. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care guys. Bye.